Going on now to section 6 of chapter 2. We've divided the uh, problems up into different parts. Now we're going to take a look at percent and mixture problems. Now there is a certain strategy, a recipe for doing these, and hopefully that's what you're going to pick up on. So for example, one it says the number 63 is what percent of 72? Now you might think of that in an arithmetic way, but here's something easy. We want you to set it up in an algebra way. So the number 63 is what percent, that's what you don't know, use P for percent, of, remember, is times, that was a key word, and you put it as times. So that's the equation for this one. We'll solve that in a minute. This next one is similar. Here it says the number 120 is equal sign. Now, whenever you have a percent, in order to do calculations with it, you need to convert it to its decimal form. So 15% becomes 0.15. Of what number? Well, we don't know that. That's our unknown. So in your strategy to solve, how would you solve this first one? Well, you want to get rid of the 72. So you divide both sides by 72. The 72's will cancel out, and this is going to give you a decimal fraction. We'll get back to that shortly. Now for this one, again, you had where we can get rid of decimals, but here we're going to use a calculator. We're just going to divide both sides by 0.15. And it's good to put the zero there. So what do we do now? Well, we take our calculator and turn it on, and we're going to go 63 divided by 72. 63 divided by 72 gives me 0 0.875. But again, they want to know what percent that is. Well, this is a decimal fraction. The technique to change a decimal fraction to a percent, here's the basic rule. Move the decimal place over two places to the right and add a percent sign. So the answer is 87.5%. Now for this next one, we're going to divide both sides by 0.15. So in my calculator, I put 120 divided by 0.15, and I get 800. So what is the number? 800. So it's really critical. I know when I had the class, and I'd have students, you have to write the equation. These are easy. You could do them by arithmetic. But by converting it to an equation, it helps you to set up the pattern that later when you get a hard one, you're able to do it, hopefully. All right, for example three on page 128, they do give a, a nice graph there. And mine isn't very well or proportionate. But they talk about different pet owners in the states. And they have freshwater fish, dogs, cats. And the kinds of questions they're asking is, what percent of pet owners in the United States are cats or dogs? Well, you would add the cats and the dogs together. What percent of pet owners in the States are not bird owners? Well, you'd have to see which is the birds, 
subtract that, and again, the whole thing is 100%. And question C is there's this many 377.41 million pet owners, or pets are owned in the United States, how many of these would be cats? Well, you would take 23%, change that to a decimal, multiply it by that big number, and that would give you the answer. So, not a lot to do here, and uh, it's kind of wordy, so I'm not going to spend any more time on it. Here's one that you might come across, and actually good news. Here a phone company reduced the price of a $140 phone by 20%. So what will be the new price? Well, let's set it up as an equation. So if it's going to be reduced by 20%, we're going to say, here's the original price. And this is going to be the new price out there. How much of that original price are you going to pay if you're getting 20% off? Now, there's a way to do it in two steps, where you take 20% of that, then subtract it. But this way, if we take 20% off of 100%, that leaves us with... 80%. So if we take 80% of the 140, that is what our N is, and that's $112. Now if you did it the other way, took 20% of that, then subtracted that from the 140, you'd get the same amount. But here's a way to do it in one swoop, and a little more challenging. But whatever way you decide, get the right answer, that's good. Okay, in example five, what they're going to ask us to look at is solving percent of increase and percent of decrease problems. And there's a general recipe for these, so let me illustrate it. Here we have 200 going to 220. So this is an increase. 200 going to 180. That's a decrease. So they both have some similar things about them. First you find the difference. Well, I have a difference of 20 here. Does that make sense? It's increase, so the difference is 20. You put the 20 over the original amount. You always put your increase or decrease over the original amount. So here it's gone from 200 to 180. Again, there's 20 over 200. But now this was a decrease, but always over the original. So, this is going to be a 10% increase, and this will be a 10% decrease. If you put 2 out of 20, that's 1 out of 10, that's a 10%. Now you might say, how could it be the same answer? Well, because this is an increase, and this is a decrease. Now in your textbook and in your practice, they're going to change the numbers. But the key is, find the difference, and then if it's an increase, it always, or a decrease, it always goes over your original amount. And that will be your percent of increase or decrease. All right, this next one's sort of a sophisticated problem. You need to 
listen carefully and uh, see if you can figure it out. Now you all know what movies are, the cinema. Well, it used to be that you'd have these great big cans of film that they had to move around the country to the various theaters. This was called analog films. Well, today we use digital, and not really films, but we could classify them as that in a sense. Now, what they're saying, every year, the number of cinemas that are switching from analog films to digital films is increasing. In fact, they're telling us that from last year to this year, there was a 122% increase over what they had last year. And that amount this year was 36,208 theaters are now using these digital films. Now, how many theaters were using it last year? Well, that's what we don't know. So we're going to say those that were using it last year were N. Now, of this number, N, there was 122% increase. So there's your 122% increase of those that were using it last year. So here's where the tricky part is. We have to collect like terms here. Remember, there is a 1 there. Ah. So what does this become? Well, this becomes 2.22n equals 36208. Now, what do we have to do to solve it? Well, we have to divide both sides by our numerical coefficient. And since we're using a calculator, we don't have to uh, worry about the decimal that much. So 3602, oh, I got the zero in the wrong place here. Let's see, 36208 divided by 2.22, and it says to round it off. So that's going to be 16,310. So N equals 16,310. Now, if you take 122% of that, add it together, you'll get this number. Okay, that was example six. Now often they have a requirement for algebra in order to get into chemistry. And it's to be able to do problems like this. Here we have someone who needs 12 liters of 50% acid solution. And he goes to his storeroom and he finds he has 40% and 70%, and he's wondering, well, how much of each of these two, using his uh, graduate cylinders and things, does he need to mix to get a 50% solution? So, again, strategy here. Now, we know we have 12 liters of the 50% at the end. Now, how much of this 12% I'm sorry, 12 liters do we need of each one? Well, that's the part we don't know. Now, is there a way, a general way, to divide 12 into two parts that we don't know what they are? Well, we're going to say this portion is n, and we don't know that. And then if we subtract the n from the 12, we get 12 minus n. That's the other portion. So how much of this do we need? Well, we don't know. We're going to say n. How much of this one? Well, the other part. 
And this is the marvel of algebra. You don't know what those numbers are, but the algebra is going to take care of it. So how do we convert this? Well, it's going to be point 40 of n plus point 70 of 12 minus n. I guess that's going to be down here. I put it in the wrong place here. That little red box was very useful, by the way. And that's going to equal this, which will be 0.50 of 12. And that's basically your equation. So it'll be 0.40n. And what I'm going to do is, by the way, is I'm going to multiply everything by 10. I'm sorry, 100, to get rid of all my decimals. And this is going to be plus 70 times 12 minus n equals 50 times 12. To save a little time, I did some of this calculation. So I have to get rid of my grouping symbol. This becomes 840 minus 70n, group like terms, I get a negative 30n, transpose this to the other side, I get a negative 240. Now here, you're going to divide by a negative, which will make this positive, so n is 8. So n, you recall, was the 40%. So I will need 8 liters of 40%, and then subtract 8 from 12, get 4 liters of 70%, and that makes my 12 liters altogether of 50%. And there's a little chart. They give you this in your textbook as well, and this is the way they solve it. All right, that was the last example in our regular chapter, but I've gone to the exercises at the end of the chapter, and keep in mind on integrity I have lots of examples. So if I have two gallons of 40% acid, then I want to make a 70% solution, how much pure acid should I add? Well, let's put down what we know. We have 40%, we have 2 gallons. Now we have a, we're going to mix into it 100%, which is pure acid. We don't know that, we call that N. And then what are we going to end up with? Well, we're going to end up with a 70%. And how much will we have then? Well, we're going to have our original 2 and the amount of pure. So that's going to be N plus 2. I could have switched them around, but that's okay that way. So that's the equation. Again, you're going to get rid of your decimals. This is the critical. So some people might just put the N here instead of the pure, the 100% of N. So, I could probably do this in my head. This is going to be 80 plus 100n equals 70n plus 140. I'm going to do some switching around. I'll transpose this to this side. This gives me 30n. I'm going to subtract that 80 from both sides. This gives me... 60. Divide both sides by 30. That gives me n equals 2. Well, interestingly, I'm just going to need 2 gallons of pure. 
And if you look at it, that makes sense because 40 is compared to 100, 70 is in the middle of that. So if you have two of this, you two of that, it's going to be right in the middle. But there we did it through algebra, and we got it. So you'll have plenty of practice, but again, it's a technique that uh, takes the practice. Again, read the textbook as needed, and uh, ask help here in Math Lab as needed as well. All right, that finishes topic six.